Welcome to the summer, folks. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and yeah, people are walking around playing Pokemon. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching C4E Tech, and I've gone and caught seven great apps you'll want to download. <laughs> Our first app of the day takes us back to that thorny issue of having a live wallpaper. Yes, they drain your battery, but they do look damn awesome and help stick two fingers firmly up in Apple's direction. This one is called Material Circle, and it uses a series of shapes and colour transitions to give your wallpaper an ever-changing cascade of, well, loveliness. There is a paid version of this wallpaper that lets you customise loads of stuff, but the free one lets you do this. I tell you, I can't get enough of this touch ripple effect. So satisfying. Are you ready? Are you ready? Life hack collections could potentially revolutionise the way you live, one small hack at a time. Basically, these are post-it sized hints about absolutely everything in life, such as gently rubbing the inside of a banana peel around your teeth for two minutes. The minerals will absorb into the teeth and whiten them. On supercook.com, just enter what ingredients you have and it tells you what meals you can make and how to make them. Oh yeah, that does actually work really well. And when you're at an airport, add a question mark dot JPEG at the end of any URL to bypass the expensive Wi-Fi and access the internet for free. Holy sh! I hope that works. You can vote each hack up or down to know if they're reliable, with the upvotes going into your favourites filter next to hot, new and top. One obvious and popular way to customise your Android device is to install an icon pack. But what if you wanted to go one step further and create your own? Well, Iconic is an app that will let you do just that. You can choose from a range of shapes and symbols including a material design style and then run it through a customization screen that lets you increase the size of the icon, rotate it, reposition it, change the icon colour, background colour, add shadows and adjust the corner radius. Now, an artist I am not, so what you're about to see will look completely hideous, but in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing and has the patience to create completely unique icons, I can see where the draw for such an application comes from. Do note that the free version does come with some limitations, low resolution exported icons being the biggest one, so I can imagine if you want this app you'll end up paying for the pro version. They say that Reddit is the front page of the internet, and while it can be the perfect place to procrastinate, it has been a little clunky to use in times gone by, especially on mobile devices. Fortunately, Relay for Reddit has pretty much perfected a user interface for the site with a glorious material design. I won't show you everything here, but some of the highlights include loading up the content of the post and then being able to seamlessly transition to the comment section by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. The layout at this point will remind you of the Google Play Store, and you can quickly skip through comments thanks to the page navigation buttons at the bottom. Another thing I really like is that Relay recognises the fact that you are on a mobile device and will help you with web content by funneling it through readability.com to give you a fresh, clean piece of text. That's the sort of UI that I really appreciate and admire. And the final thing to say about Relay is that it feels like you're using Reddit. You can filter things just like you would in Reddit and move between different subreddits just like you would on the site. It's an absolute pleasure to use and the free version doesn't seem to have any adverts too, so it's definitely worth trying out at the very least. Just remember this sage advice, if you are going to venture out into the world of Reddit and start posting stuff, make sure you equip yourself with the cloak of abuse invincibility and arm yourself with the largest troll killing axe you can find. Reddit is a dangerous place, even before dark. Now there are always times where you need to add something up against a list. Using the Android calculator would switch you to the full screen app, which is a bit useless if you want to see what you're adding up. So that's where this simple but intelligently executed floating calculator comes into play, by sitting on top of your screen, allowing you to resize it and move it around. There's lots of nice features within the calculator too that include a scientific mode and keeping history of your calculations, and the floating functionality can be used both on home screens and within applications. But we're not quite done there either. You can use the circle in the top right of the application to minimise it down to a floating button. So if you need to quickly recall the calculator, you can do so while sticking the button somewhere where it's not going to cause too much of a nuisance. A double tap will relaunch the calculator while tapping the cross button closes down the app. 
Right then, to appease those who don't like live wallpapers, here's something a lot simpler and very easy on the battery life. Take this static wallpaper as an example, very colourful but maybe a little too distracting. However, with background blur you can change three fundamental aspects of the image, starting with a blur effect that can soften those edges and make it blend into the background as it's supposed to do. Then you can adjust the brightness if you want to dim the image and finally you have the colour saturation option that can tone it down to a black and white image. Three very simple options that have a drastic effect on your image to give you a background more suited to your tones, tastes and themes. Right then, let's get this one over with. Pokemon Go is the biggest app on the planet right now, and it's turning humans into mindless zombies walking around staring at their phones, which are attached to portable battery ch No. Yep, I agree. Let's kill this right here, right now. There is another app that's making waves at the moment, and that's Prisma. It's not a new concept, you take a picture and add a filter, but the quality of the filters and the final results are making an impression. The one odd thing about the app is that the pictures have to go through Prisma's own servers and right now they are well over capacity due to the popularity, so it can take up to 20 seconds to filter the picture and sometimes it doesn't work at all. But when it does work you're almost always guaranteed a visually impressive piece of artwork. After testing this in the office I decided to go for a quick walk around where I work, took a few pictures and ran them through Prisma and every single one of them I'd be happy posting on social media. Going back to the earlier point there is a question here of if you really want to be posting your pictures off to a remote server to have them treated, but if you can live with that then you've just found yourself a lovely new camera app to play around with. Hey wouldn't you know it that's me giving you all a thumbs up which you should do if you liked this video. Make sure you add to the conversation if you have an opinion on the apps I've shown you today and with daily videos on the latest smartphones there's every reason to subscribe to C4 eTech. And since it's sunny outside and I'm clearly in a happy mood here's an added extra bit of sunshine for your day. This episode's bonus comes direct from the Google Play Store. Swipe the middle button until you reach early access and in there you'll find a small smattering of apps and games that are currently in their beta stage. As each application suggests it will still be in development and may be unstable and because they haven't been officially released you won't be able to have any star ratings or reviews to know whether they are any good or not. But it is a thoughtful idea if you fancy trying something new and for free and I quite fancy that Lego building one myself.